This material is a part of the Oklahoma Historical Society's Oral History Program, Living Legends, collection. This material was originally recorded in 1968 at the 66th birthday celebration of Okima, Oklahoma. The material was recorded by Mr. Raymond Fields. The beginning of this tape is a series of uh, brief interviews with some of the old timers of Okima, Oklahoma. And uh, from the noise in the background, it apparently was done during some sort of a meeting that took place during this celebration. The latter part of this tape is a conversation uh, with Mr. Fields on the history of Okima, Oklahoma. This material is being re-recorded on April the 15th, 1985 for inclusion in the permanent collections of the Oral History Program by Judith Michener. I'm Luke Musgrove. I came here to this town or to this county seven years before the town started. Came here in 1895. I've enjoyed living in Oak Fusky County, and I think I've got the best town in the country. What community were you in? Pardon? What community were you in? Right around Oak Fusky here. Morris was another I was there in Oak Fusky County. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you very and much. Do you have any uh, out here? Any, that was cattle country then, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. We were here. They had their own laws. And was, uh, they had the hickory stomping ground yeah. out east of Bull Kimmel between here and ground uprise down there. Well, thank you very much. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a John Curtis. I moved here in 1897. I'm Henry O. Curtis's son. And uh, I've been away for some time. I live in White Ride, Texas now. And I'm enjoying visiting to these old timers, especially to Raymond Fields here. I knew him and Alvin Fields and his, his father. We traded with them quite a bit. So, so long. So, Raymond. I'm his wife, so I have nothing to say. I'm a Texas girl. I married him in 1917. Well, you were with him. You were with John him. Curtis. Yeah, I'm with John Curtis, <laughs> and we live in White Ride, Texas. Thank you. This is Walter Bynum of Okima, Oklahoma, and uh, we are at our roundup, the Pioneer uh, Club, here on the 22nd day of April, ain't it? Yes. 1916, the 21st day, celebrating our, our 60, 66th birthday. And I'm glad to say this to you now, I'll be seeing you. That was the president of the Okima Pioneer Club addressing you. Here's another. I don't know what to say. Give your name. I'm B.K. Williams. I've been here about 63 years and still going strong. We're having a good time here and we had a good day today. And thank you. You know me. What you always say? Anything. Give me name first. I'm Lily Fields Bowen. Came to Okima in 1902. Do you remember anything about Okima? Yeah. I remember that train. <laughs> <laughs> this is, they keep calling either me or your wife. Everybody. Amy McGrath Copeland of Okima since uh, 1913. I remember the muddy streets when I come here. They were oh. <laughs> I'm Janetta Brooke Keyser, been in Okima since 1907, and uh, graduated from Muskogee High School, and I'm now living in Okima, have five children. I'm Edith May Fields Guthrie. I'm a native born of Okima, Oklahoma. I lived on Fifth Street. My father was a businessman, and I'm a third generation Fields pioneer family. Thank you, Edith. This is J.D. Keyser in Okima, Okfusky County. I've been on the board of directors for this uh, club since the uh, founding of it, and in the city for 64 years. Jim, who do you think were the three meanest kids in school here? Lloyd White, Raymond Fields, and Jim Keyser.
Yes, ma'am. Well. Be down there for years. Go ahead. Well, well, this is a wonderful meeting, isn't it? What is your name? Ethel Warren. Yeah. Uh, how long have you been here, Miss Warren? I come here in 1899 when I was nine years old. In 1889. 1899, when I was nine years old, and I've been here ever since. You've worked for a ranch family, were you? And I've been a widow 32 years. Thank you very much. My name is May Rutland Baldwin. I came to Oak County in 1899, before Old Kima was ever built. My brother and I, my brother Ray and I, went to the Methodist Church here in Okima in a tent. The first church that was here in Okima. And I'm still a member. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, this is a very historic uh, site so far as churches are concerned. The Baptist Church was upstairs here before they built it. Now on the, on the, I think it was too. Yes, I know it was. And it was the Methodist Church we came. The old Dexter house was across here. It was the best hostelry until they built that luxurious three-story Broadway hotel down the street. Give your name. Well, uh, this is Albert A. Harrell. I come to this part of the Indian Territory in 1893, November the 3rd. And it was just a wide open space. It was just one store closer than we woke in. That is over what we call them Doug Sharp places, the Mike Dunnett Ranch Inn. That I was a very small boy, but I still remember it. We eat dinner there and had it on. Thank you very much, Mr. Harrell. I'm Roland Green. Been here since uh, 1907. I've carried mail on a rural route out of here for 40 years and six months. I ought to know everybody, but I don't. Turn it off. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I can't talk to you. I think I'm Turn it off. Thank you very much. Speech I have made. Miss Sam T. Farmer. Come to Oak come to Okima, March the 17th, 1903. And we, uh, people had asked, did, she, did the plumber move here in covered wagon? And I said, well, no, I followed behind the covered wagon. You have the uh, mercantile firm of uh, Palmer and Stanley, did you? Not have? then, no. My husband went out to Burke City, now in existence, and uh, he said, and he knew that I wouldn't want to live out there, so he... You folks did operate one of the famous landmarks of Okima, the Creek Trading Company. That's right, Okima. that's right. And uh, it uh, grew from a wide, wide area. People came from everywhere to trade with the Creek Trading Company. In, in Oklahoma, I see. And you uh, kept uh, an interpreter, Wallace Cook. Wallace Cook, that's right. I'm um, very glad to have you reminisce this way about old people. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Give your name, please. I'm John Armstrong. I came to Rokima from Old Shawnee Town. I was born there in 1899, February the 12th, and have lived in this county continuously. John, uh, what were you were a farm boy? I was raised on the farm four miles east and two north of Okima. Four miles east and two north. That's the Mountain Grove area, uh, isn't it? Yes, went to school. Or, uh, my schooling was all at Mountain Grove. Bill Johnson used to be a teacher he, there. I was in school two years under him, and we played uh, the basketball, had a winning team were undefeated in two years. Uh, you beat my team over at Pleasant Valley. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that, but we were very fortunate, I guess. Well, Bill Johnson came to be one of the outstanding oil, independent oil producers of the Southwest. He was a very wealthy man. Yes. Uh, very good uh, man. His brother, Ralph, is in Houston now, one of the leading oil figures of the industry. I never met his brother. I've never seen him. Ralph no, was younger. Mm -hmm. uh, along the line of Bill, it's well to put in 
he was reared out here at school. And he came into Okima. He was the oldest student in his class. He was 21 years of age when he was a sophomore in high school. <laughs> and he was quite a personage, though. He uh, boarded at, at, at our home uh, when he was teaching at Mountain Grove. And then uh, D. Replogel formed a partnership with him, and Bill became an oil man. And uh, he went ahead and made tons of money, I guess. Tons of money. He died in Denver unexpectedly. That's right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I'm Kate Rutland. Come here is Kate Rutland, 18 and 99. And I live at Seminole, Oklahoma now. I married Chris Whitson in 1911, and we had two children. And they're both married and have children. I have five grandchildren and eight great-grandchildren. I have two children. You folks uh, ranched and farmed yes. out east of town. Out east of town. Is w. Mountain Grove. Yeah, W.J. Rutten was we, my father. Uh, I've just reminisced a little about Bill Johnson when he taught school at Mountain Grove. Yes, I went to school out there, and A.P. Carter was the first teacher. And then there was uh, Mrs. Barker. Mrs. Uh, that's here today. She was, uh, you know, what was her name then? But anyhow, I went to school out right there at Mountain Grove School, that's the only school I ever went to. Thank you very much, Ms. Roberts. I am Marie Fleming Green, the wife of Rowan Green, and I've lived in uh, Ophusser County since 1907. Came here at it was a very small place to what I had been used to back in Illinois. Roland's retired now, is he not? Yes. Mail carrier. Yes, he is a retired mail carrier and has been enjoying his retirement very much. And we live on a 20-acre plot out south of town. Have everything we have in Okima. We have city water, paved road. So we have it very nice out there. And well, I know he was glad to come to this reunion and meet old friends. It's real nice. We do see people that... Uh, we see not other places. Thank you very kindly, Mrs. Green. Mrs. C.B. Longmore, and I have been here, um, I'm an old pioneer. I've been here since 1903. That's it. Thank you, Mrs. Longmore. <laughs> I could tell these fingers, then you start talking. Uh, my name is Sana Mitchell. I was son of ward when I come to this country, the first day of January, 1900. Where did you live? I lived uh, all, uh, just eight miles northeast of here, and I lived there till 10 years ago. I moved to town after my husband died. We lived here in town four years while he lived, but we just moved back to the farm, and we settled right up. Right there, and that's where I've been ever since I've never been living out of the county. I'm just out of visiting once in a while. I never have lived any place else but right here. And I raised a family of six children. They all finished high school here, but they're all married and gone. And one in here, one in Idaho, one's in California, two's in Texas, <laughs> one's here. So that I've been here all my life. I was 12 years old when I come here. You enjoy these reunions, do you not? What is it? You enjoy these reunions. Yes, 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 yes. Do you I make thought them was meet here? What is it? Do you make them each year? Uh, you well, the I, uh, since I've been in town, I have, I just, uh, I'm crippled now. I don't get around very good, but I'm live so far. I live just by myself, though. Well, thank you very, very much. Well, yes. Sound heard in the background are the pioneers and founders of Okima reminiscing among themselves. They are telling many stories of the early days of this lusty prairie town. Among the choice stories that were told today was one when the Fort Smith and Western came into Okima soon after the founding. This was a gala event, according to the old-timers. They had a locomotive, you might call it a teapot, uh, gaily uh, decorated with bunting and flags, and it was driven by one of the top officials of the railway, a Mr. Parks of Fort Smith, whose title was superintendent of the road. 
Mr. Parks would, uh, they would lay a rail and then Mr. Parks would drive the locomotive up to the end of the rails. And at one time, when a large crowd was assembled around the locomotive, many of them had never, seen, had never seen a train. And Mr. Parks leaned out of the window and said, hey, you folks out there, look out, I'm going to turn her around. And they scattered like a covey of quail. Mr. Parks recounted this story for many, many years. He was attendant at the birth of the railway, and he also was present for the death, since he was the receiver when the railway was declared bankrupt. It doesn't exist today, and Okima is an inland town of some 3,500 population. Soon after the founding of Okima, there was a population of some 2,000. Mostly, it was supported by cowboys and by farmers. They had large stockyard for loading cattle onto the railway and shipping them mostly to Kansas City by way of the Frisco, which came close to Okima at Walika, some 14 miles away. However, in 1926, when the Cromwell oil field was discovered, Okima experienced a great boom and became a town of almost 7,000 population. The oil field declined and so then Okima did accordingly. At one town, time, this town of 2000 had three daily newspapers. They were very, very small. One was published by a group of young men who came to work at the Fort Smith and Western Depot. Another was published by the Socialist Party, which had a large membership in the Okima community. This was called Clerk was anti-socialist strongly. He is the father of the famous uh, Guthrie, the young man who has charmed the nation with his folk song and who passed away just a few months ago. However, these three papers soon folded uh, and uh, the uh, town had two weeklies, the Okima Ledger and the Okfusky County News. In 1926, these papers were consolidated and the Okima Daily Leader there was the successor to the two weeklies. The Okima Daily Leader existed until January the 1st, 1968, when it was converted into a twice-a-week paper. The first newspaper in Okima was the McDermott News. Now, I'll keep in mind that McDermott was the name of the community before it was converted to the town of Okima. Okima was formally opened the 22nd of April, 1902. And in an article which was reprinted by the Okima Ledger on Tuesday, Thursday, the 13th birthday of Okima, Many of the old-timers' names are listed. For instance, they say C.P. Gilmore, our local carpenter, has loaned us a paper of the McDermott News, Volume 1, Number 6, published Tuesday, May the 6th. Bokema would have been some three weeks old at that time. The editor of the news was evidently a typical territory booster. As he says, quote, we will be disappointed if McDermott does not in 10 years 
make one of the best towns of the two territories since the first night we all slept in the holler and had only five cents apiece. We dream great things. The town site people have set aside $5,000 for public improvements. A $1,000 public school building will be erected at once. Still another article entitled, The McDermott Town Site Company gives a list of the officers of the company and a list of the original lot holders. There are only about 15 of the original lot holders residing in Okima at the time this article was reprinted by the Okima Ledger, and 33 were supposed to make up the original list. Here we will add that Edgar Noble was the original list, has the original list of the lot holders in his possession at Oak Margie. The officers of the McDermott Town Site Company were A.B. Allen, Oak Margie President, F.F. F. Lamb, Oak Margie, A.B. Allen, Bristow, and A.B. Dunlap of the Mac, that was the McDermott Treasure. In an article headed, We Need Legislation, in part it says, the white man is waiting to make a home for himself and family. He is willing to lift the red man out of the rut and make it possible for him to revel in hog and hominy, bay rum and Jamaica ginger. And if he isn't happier, he will have no one to blame but himself. Another reprinted article says, we have two public wells. The one on Broadway and Main Street is down 102 feet and has 40 feet of water. The one at 9th and Main is down 35 feet and has a good prospect of water. For what is the State Bank of McDermott with a capital stock of $10,000 was established the very day the town was organized, April the 22nd. They do have their first class business, and the bank is backed by A.B. Dunlap as president and Herman C. Schultz as cashier, making one of the strongest banking companies in the Indian Territory. They have a first class burglar proof safe and all money is absolutely secure when deposited with them. There was about $1,000 deposited with the bank during the first three hours after opening. P.B. Wilson is putting in a large stock of lumber. He serves his patrons right, continues the article. C.B. Gilmore is a first-class contractor and builder. He has the contract for five new buildings. Among the names of the original lot holders that are well known to us later day Okemaites, we find the names of F.F. F. Lamb, E.H. Moore, E.P. Adkins, S.L. Johnson, G.L. Bideman, G.C. Bideman, E.T. Noble, all of Oak Margie. From Henrietta, I.P. Graham, Sr. and Jr., W.M. Wright, and J.W. Sullins. From Mounds, Samuel F. Smith. From Bearden, R.W. Armstrong, C.A. Gibson, T.H. Bridges, James Hill, Carl Mann, L.P. Armstrong, Quincy Taylor and C.L. Gray. From Wewoka, the list of lot holders is W.C. Brimsfield, C.W. Farrell, A.V. Skelton, Leroy Cheek. From Wetumpka, W.H. Fields. 
Tom McDermott, Wilson, Bowler, F.F. F. Miller, D.B. Clay, Clay, Thomas R. Crawford, J.S. Stone, S. Bowling, O.C. Laramore. Mrs. Laramore was present for the occasion in 1968. From Shawnee, Hunter Montgomery and Henry Manser are listed. From Willica, A.L. Sanford, B.B. Wilson, J.M. Northup. From Keokuk Falls, Matt Bargo, S.K. Smith, L.A. Nye, A.G. Wisnant. From Chandler, W.J. Lawrence. From Morris, J.J. Musgrove, J.E. Galloway. From Fentress, A.E. Finks, B. Kane. From Neal, Fletcher White. T.J. Keel, address was not given. T.A. Man Warning was from Oak Fusky. So this is the list of lot holders in McDermott, later Okima, as of May the 6th, 1902, three weeks after the founding of this city. So this is the story of Okima as it was related on the April 22nd, 1968 celebration in one of the first stone buildings ever erected in the community. Governor Bartlett had signed a proclamation making this an official state observation, and this will remain true through the remainder of Okima's existence. We believe this story is interesting because it is of true pioneers who came to a prairie town and founded a community that has prospered, existed, and been a part of the life. It has been the county seat of Oak Fusky County since statehood in 1917. There was a gigantic celebration of Okima's victory in the election for a county seat over its neighbor towns of Willica and Castle. And S.L. Bannon, who was a school teacher at uh, the opening of Okima, but later became a lawyer, prominent lawyer, and district judge of Okmulgee County, made the famous oration, which still is remembered by many Okima pioneers. Mr. O'Bannon pointed out that the Western Hemisphere was the center of the world. He further pointed out that the United States was the center of the Western Hemisphere. Then he continued that Oklahoma was the center of the United States. And with oratorical finery, he pointed out that Oak Fusky County was the center of Oak Oklahoma and that Okima was the center of Oak Fusky County and therefore of the world. It was a vivid, vivid description of Okima as the center of the world. Thank you.